Would you? Come on, give it up. Let's welcome you. Come on, Bob. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Hey, y'all can go ahead and take a seat. I want to thank Pastor JJ and his ministry for uh, bringing me out here and having me out here. And it's just amazing what God can do and what God has been doing in my life. And he's been having me travel all over the places and speaking at places. And you know, I'm 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 known for some of y'all might know me as a rapper. I'm a rapper from Houston, and uh, but God has really been having me share my testimonies. Last week I was in Colorado. The week before that I was in New Mexico. The week before that I was in Dallas. Uh, God willing, next week I'll be in uh, Waco. So God just been having me move around and, and share my testimony and share the goodness of God. What what happens with somebody when they choose with a man when he chooses to give it all to God and surrender to God and really walk in God's will, the blessings that you will walk into. Like there's already a blessing with your name on it, but when you try to walk in your will, you're gonna miss it every time. And you're gonna run into a dead end, you're gonna hit your head against the wall. And that's what happened to me for years and years and years. I just finally got tired of hitting my head against that wall. You know what I mean? And, uh, the hardest thing, what I've learned is the hardest thing that a man can do is overcome himself. To overcome his own sinful nature, his own fleshy desires, his own lustful thoughts. That's the hardest thing you can do. But if you can overcome it and do it with self-discipline, it takes time, self-discipline, and a relationship with God. A real intimate relationship with God, you can overcome it and you can do it. Then God will use you to help other men that are still out there going through that. Because that's what happened with me. What you're looking at right now is a new creation in Christ. I'm not the same person I used to be three years ago. I started making a, uh, uh, I have a YouTube channel and I started making these uh, uh, like motivational morning videos. I basically was trying to document my growth, my personal development growth, my spiritual growth, and I wanted to bring my viewers along the journey. And it was basically like an experiment with my life because, you know, I had tried every other thing to quit. I was on drugs and alcohol, and I had kids with different women, kids I wasn't taking care of. I was living a real foul lifestyle, and uh, I just had enough. I had threw my hands up and you know, I needed to, I needed help, so I, I got on my knees one day and I prayed to God, and um, something told me to go outside. I just as silly as it may sound, but something told me to go outside and go run every morning and pray to God every morning and do it every day, seven days a week. I would start. I wake up before everybody in my house. You know, as men, we're the head of our household, so we got to lead by example. So there's a difference between being a leader and a manager. And some men are, are they manage their home. You know, they make sure they got food in the refrigerator and the lights are on, but they don't know what's going on with their kids or their, them and their wife are not connected or, you know, it's, they're just managing their household. But to lead your house, you have to have influence. So you gotta lead by example. So I make sure that I wake up before everyone in my house. I wake up first and I go spend time with the Lord every morning on my knees before I do anything. And right after that, I do some push-ups and I go outside and run. I read a proverb. There's 31 proverbs. So if it's the 10th, I read the 10th proverb. If it's the 15th, I read the 15th proverb. If it's the 30th, I read the 30th proverb every day. And doing that every day is the self-discipline that you need to grow spiritually. And after doing that for about, you know, uh, months, 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 God started to work in my life and it really did, something started to happen. People started, uh, that weren't for me, got taken out of my life, and then people started getting put into my life. That, you know, I, I started meeting new friends. You know, if you, if you start working on yourself and you do it wholeheartedly and, and you know, in God's will, God will put people in your life to help you along your way, you know, uh, but you got to do it with integrity. You have to do it. Uh, you know, they, they say a man has three faces. 
There's a face that he shows everybody, the world, you know, when he's at work with his coworkers, with his friends. And then there's the face that he shows his home, that his kids and his family see. And then there's the face that he shows when it's just him and no one else is around. When you're just you in your car, or when you're at home and no one's there, or you know, when you're just by yourself. And that is who you truly are. So you gotta, you know, be a man of integrity and do the right thing when no one is looking. And that's how you really grow. And it takes self-discipline. But if you can do it, and you won't be able to do it with your own strength, you gotta have that relationship with God. You know what I'm saying? Because you gotta, you gotta build that relationship. And to build that relationship, it's just like if you're uh, having a relationship with a, uh, uh, want to build a relationship with a woman, and it's not going to be the first day you talk to the girl, y'all have a relationship. You call her, she call you, you text her, she texts you. You know, you got to build that relationship. So it takes time and it takes, you have to do it through uh, having a, a good prayer life. You know, and the more you choose to make God the first person you talk to in the morning, the last person you talk to at night. You know, that, that's how you build that relationship with God. Amen. So that, that's what I've been doing, man. The last, the last couple years, I, I've, I've done that religiously. Like every, every day, on my knees, praying to God, push-ups, going outside, running, and, and God. And I was showing it on YouTube, and I'm letting my people know, and they've seen. Like if you go back and look at the old videos from where I, where I was to now, you can see the difference and the change. And so, and then God just started said, okay, you've been doing that on YouTube, you've been doing it online from your house, now I wanna take you out there. I wanna take you out to these, to these, to these dark places so that you can really shine and, and you know what I'm saying, and show, show the goodness of God and give God the glory for it, you know what I mean? And that's what I've been doing. Um, and I, and I, y'all see this right now, so it's kinda, if y'all don't, don't follow me or something, it's kinda hard to understand, but man, I was, really bad on, on drugs and alcohol for a long time. Uh, when I was a kid, my, my parents had me when they were real young and they didn't know what they were doing and I didn't know what a, a, to be a real man was. I didn't, my image of a man was what my dad and my uncles, what, what they were. And you know, they were uh, drug dealers, they're in and out of prison, carry guns, alcohol, cocaine, weed, all that was what I was raised around. So that's what I thought a man was. So all through my teenage years, you know, that's what I tried to be like. I, you know, I, I looked up to them and I thought that was cool. I thought, and it just ended up me going to juvenile, in and out of jail, and then uh, I started rapping. And luckily the rap, rapping really took me away from my neighborhood and my friends because they ended up all going to prison. The rapping kind of saved me, but at the same time, it ended up uh, all the all the stuff that came with the, the rap game, all the the fast life, the money, the drugs, the alcohol, and being in the clubs every night. It, it, after years of doing that, I developed a drug habit and developed, became an alcoholic, really. You know, and I started having kids and I wasn't taking care of them. And then uh, when all through my 20s, that went on. And when I was 29, I felt like, I, when, when I was in my late 20s, I realized I had a problem. Uh, me and my best friend that I grew up to, we tried to kill each other. He uh, drove his truck into my house. We shot at his truck. And this is my best friend, but we were on dope. We are coked up and fighting over drugs. And we ended up trying to kill each other. And then just a lot of mess went on. You know, uh, when I was uh, 29, I ended up going to jail for a DWI. When I was sitting in there, I realized that everybody else in there, they didn't have nothing going on in their life. So they're just in jail, comfortable, like going on about their business, telling jokes and, you know, like if it was nothing. But me, I knew that, uh, you know, I had a, I had something going on with my life. I was a rapper, people knew who I was. I had a, I, I, like I was throwing my life away and I didn't belong there. So I knew I needed to make a change, but I didn't know how. So I didn't think to call to God, but you know, uh, I. When I, when I got out, I went to AA. It was uh, part of my probation. I went to AA and I tried for a little while and it worked for a little while, but in AA, they teach you to pray to a higher power. They really don't teach you about Jesus and the goodness of God's grace. And they don't teach you about the word of God. They just teach you that you need to pray to something, but they don't tell you what. So that worked for a little while, but it didn't really heal me, you know? So I ended up going right back out there falling off and I'd be back on the drugs and 
I would call out to everyone. I remember I would call like my family members up. I'd, I'd be up in the middle of the night or in the morning really, because after the party's over and everybody would leave my house, it's just me up by myself, coked up looking out the window and knowing that, you know, that I needed to change. And so I didn't know what to do. I, would, I remember I'd call my grandma or call my aunts and all and be like, yo, I need help, something's wrong with me. You know what I'm saying? And I was on the verge like, do I kill myself or what, what do I do? Because I, I didn't know what to do. And I didn't think to call out to God, but wow. you know, uh, my I started having more kids. Basically, my kids were not babies no more. When your kids are babies, you know, you can hide what you're doing when they're babies, but when they get older, you know, they start knowing what's up. And I knew that I didn't want my kids to end up doing what I did because I saw what my parents did. You know what I mean? So I knew I had to make a change for them. <laughs> So when I was 39 years old, it had already been 10 years of me trying, from 29 to 39, 10 years of me trying it on my own to change my life, and I couldn't do it. So when I was 39 years old, I, one, one night I went out, the same thing, driving drunk, uh, looking for some coke, uh, and I finally made it home the morning, woke up with a hangover, and I see all my kids there now. And I remembered when I was 20, 10 years ago, 29, when I did the same thing and ended up in jail. And I was like, man, here I am 10 years later, and now I have these kids, and you know, something's gotta change. And so I went to the bathroom, and I got on my knees, and I prayed to God, and I said, God, help me. I was surrendered, I had to wave the white flag, and you like, Pastor J.J. said, if you're desperate, I was desperate. You know, I was, I was desperate. I called out to God and I was like, help me. And God had to bring me through all that for me to, you know, he was chasing me down all those years, but I was just running from him. I was just running, running, running. I wanted to do my own thing. I thought I could do it on my own until I realized that I needed God's strength to be able to fight off these temptations and fight off my addiction and be able to be the true man of God that he called me to be so I could raise my children and, and go out and, and help people. You know, the Bible says that we're supposed to go out and make disciples of many nations. We're not supposed to just go to church on Sunday, put $20 in the basket and go on about our life, go back to be living a secular life during the week. No, we're supposed to be a real mighty man of God. You know what I mean? That takes self-discipline to do that. You know what I mean? It takes self-discipline. Some people, hey, it's only been two years since I've been walking with God and I, God has me traveling, ministering to people, preaching the word of God and people ask, how did you get like a speed pass or something? How, what happened to you? You know what I mean? But it was because of my acts of obedience and discipline every day. Daily acts of discipline will change your life. If you can do it every day, seven days a week, you know what I'm saying? When it, when it would run, when it would be raining outside and I couldn't go run, I would run inside, up and down the hallway 50 times. You know what I'm saying? Just making sure that I was disciplined with what I'm doing because I needed that change and I was desperate. And God had written, now God has shown so much favor on my life that it's just, there's no denying it. People that know me, they, they can see the change in me now. I, he's restored my relationships with my my kids, uh, my mom, my dad, we weren't even on speaking terms, me and my parents. We didn't we didn't get along, you know what I'm saying? Now we can sit down and have, we, you know, they're proud of me. Everybody's proud of me now, you know what I'm saying? And it's crazy. And so, yeah, man, uh, I really I really don't want to take up too much of y'all time. I know they gave me an hour to talk. I really thought I was gonna come up here and rap, but Pastor JJ, he was like, no, you're gonna go up there and talk. You're gonna go share your testimony with these people. These men need to hear that. So yeah, man, I'm just, I'm just uh, wanna let y'all know that if y'all surrender and give it all to God and be obedient with your walk, God will show up in your life. And if not, you're gonna continue to go through this cycle because we're all learning. We're here to learn and grow spiritually. That's what we're here for. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to continue going through these cycles until you pass the test. You know what I'm saying? God's going to test our faith. We're going to go through storms. He's going to test our faith. And the enemy is going to tempt us with temptation during those trials. When we go through these trials, the enemy is going to tempt us. But we have to remember the goodness of God. So if God got me through it last time. He's going to get me through it this time. And I just stand on that promise and take it day by day. 
every morning we got to deny our body deny our flesh that's why i say it's so important to wake up earlier than you used to and go get on your knees and pray to god and hit their push-ups do something not to get swole not to just i've never been athletic i was never into sports you know what i'm saying but i go out there and do that to deny my flesh and to show god that i'm being obedient to him and then I really need him, his Holy Spirit, to move inside of me and get me through these next 24 hours. I know, I know what kind of mess I can get myself into if, if I don't have God with me. So I got to make sure I, I'm full of the Holy Spirit. You know, when I was, my, we were at the hotel, my son uh, was like, we're going to turn on TV. I'm like, nah, I can't watch TV. I'm on assignment right now. I can't pollute my mind. I got to watch what I listen to. I got to watch what I put into my mind because, you know, the enemy's waiting. He's crouching in the corner waiting to devour me. You know what I'm saying? The enemy don't want me up here talking to y'all. You know what I'm saying? I got to watch what I'm looking at on social media. There might be a girl with a big booty on there or something. You know what I'm saying? I got to watch that. You know what I'm saying? It's real out here, man. But if you can, that, that's the little daily acts of discipline that I'm talking about. But God will shower you with blessings. He will open the window of heaven and pour down blessings on you. If you are obedient with your walk with Christ. And use it to glorify God and help others. Not just for yourself. This ain't just so I could, you know, for me to come up here and make some money. No, I'm trying to help others. That's how I grow. By helping others. You know what I'm saying? But man, thank y'all for having me. Salute all y'all. And you know, I'm proud of everybody who showed up to be here, man. Thank y'all.